Stand by 1010, investigator reported disturbance at Acer Plaza. 10 4 dispatcher, verify address. That's Acer Plaza, repeat, Acer Plaza. Shots fired on the rooftop. An assault in progress at Acer Plaza. Repeat, an assault in progress. Shot was an exclamation mark to everything that had led to this point. I released my finger from the trigger, and then it was over. To make any kind of sense of it, I need to go back three years, back to the night the pain started. I was still on the force back then, NYPD, Manhattan, Midtown North Precinct, Hell's Kitchen. So when are you coming to work for me, Detective Payne? You'd make me work undercover in some hell hole. Sorry, Alex. Michelle and the baby come first. See? My last smoke. It's bad for the baby. That's you, Max. A regular Boy Scout. See ya, Alex. They're still on for poker Thursday night, right? Like taking candy from a baby. Life was good. The sun setting on a sweet summer's day. The smell of freshly mowed lawns, the sounds of children playing, a house across the river on the Jersey side, a beautiful wife and a baby girl. The American dream come true. Honey, I'm home. But dreams have a nasty habit of going bad when you're not looking. The sun went down with practice bravado. Twilight crawled across the sky, laden with foreboding. Michelle, honey, anybody home? I didn't like the way the show started, but they'd give me the best seat in the house, front row center. What the hell? Please, Michelle. Oh, baby. It was three years ago, everything ripped apart in a New York minute. The killer junkies had been high on a previously unknown designer drug, Valkyr, V. After the funeral, I told Alex I'd be transferring to the DEA. It took us three long years to get a break in the Valkyr case. Then, finally, two months ago, a dime dropper tipped us off that Jack Lupino, a mob boss in the Punchinello crime family, was trafficking. I went undercover infiltrated the worst mafia family in New York. I came in from the cold and the dark. Outside the city was a cruel monster. 
I've been slowly working my way from the small time to the big fish, trying to get to the source of the drug. Alex and BB were my only contacts in the DEA, the only ones in this decrepit city who knew I was down here. BB here. Something urgent has come up with Jack Lapino. You need to meet with Alex immediately at the Roscoe Street station. I hadn't had a face to face with Alex since I'd gone undercover. Outside, the mercury was falling fast. It was colder than the devil's heart, raining ice pitchforks as if the heavens were ready to fall. Everyone was running for shelter like there was no tomorrow. It didn't get any better when I got to the subway. The feeling hit me like a point-blank shot straight in the face. Something was not right about this. My Beretta stirred nervously under my coat, but the train doors had already shut behind me, and I was in for the ride. Next stop, Roscoe Street Station, and Alex. The station was drenched in gloom. Alex was a ghost, nowhere to be seen. I'd have to look for him. Death was in the air at Roscoe Street. I'd have to find Alex fast. The pills would hold the pain back for a while. Wasn't Jake supposed to take care of this? Did you hear something? Yeah, what the? While looking for Alex, I had ended up in the middle of a big-time crime operation. Hitting Roscoe Bank ain't exactly keeping low profile. The riskiest heist ever. But what the? Said goodbye. Oh, you saved me, man. What's going on here? A massacre. These armed thugs just appeared from nowhere. We need to get help. I can make the call from the control room one floor up. Can you take me there? 
Sure. Sounds good. Follow me. Home free. This way. Yo. Look out. The train lit up like a Christmas tree. The power was back on. The rusty door led to an abandoned part of the station, closed off since the early 40s. Something big was going down in Roscoe Street. Maybe that's why Alex had wanted to meet me here. Maybe not. One way or the other, I was gonna find out.
Okay, fellas. The police are on their way. New day. Bank robbers had left their tools on the table. Judging by the detonators, the crooks had bought enough explosives to send Lady Liberty into orbit. Jesus, you almost gave me a heart attack. I nearly shot you. Alex, we're glad to see you. What the hell's going on? There are more corpses here than at the city morgue. It's an armed robbery, a tunnel job straight to the Roscoe Bank vault through the old station wall. Is this why this is Lupino's gig? This is Lupino's doing? Lupino's men? Really? You sure know how to pick a place? Can you get through? No, it's locked. We gotta get out of here. If it's Lupino, it's... Alex? There was nothing I could do. He was dead. I could tell by the empty, accusing stare of his eyes.
Alex had kept me relatively sane for the past three years. Now I didn't know how I felt. Somehow he had stumbled upon something big and ended up stepping on Jack Lupino's toes. Lupino ran his racket of sex, drugs, and contract killings from a sleazy hotel in a slum block of tenements. The NYPD was closing in. I could hear the sirens. Their wail was a crescendo. Lupino thought he could get us by taking Alex out and leaving me to take the fall for it. All he had gotten was my attention. I went for the hotel first. It was a sad old thing with flickering lamps and faded colors, cheap mobster punks and tired-eyed prostitutes. I walked straight in, playing at Bogart, like I'd done a hundred times before. The place was run by a couple of murdering mobsters with shark smiles. The Finito Brothers. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the pain in the butt. Pain to the max. You're killing me. Did you make that up yourselves, or you get some wine out downstairs to come up with it? Don't answer that. A rhetorical question. I got something for the boss. Lupino around? That kind of depends on who's asking. A friend or a junk squad plant? The don't answer. It's one of them, uh, how do you put it, uh, rhetorical questions. Lupino ain't here, but he says bye. Lupino wasn't in his cheap hotel. Instead, I ran into the Finito brothers. My cover had been blown. The door slammed shut behind me. And then I was dodging bullets like raindrops. Cane in the butt. Ha ha, pay to the max. Jump squad king. Got a ticket to Marvel City for it. First is high and down. Bring it in. desk caught my eye. Bosses! Everything all right? Bosses! Joey! Vigilio! You all right in there? They're not answering. Call the others. Tell them to come quick. Okay, but we can't wait for them. We gotta go in now! Bosses! We're coming in! Hey! Something's wrong with the bosses. Paint yo! Previously on Lords and Ladies. Lady Amelia? Yo. Monkey Valentine asks ah. for an audience. Thank you, Lawrence. My lady. My lord. And now, an all-new episode of Lords and Ladies, ah. brought to you in part by Acer Corporation. My lady. My lord. My lady, it is a matter of great importance. V-head junkies could go off without a warning. I had to be careful. Indeed, my lady, there is indeed. From the very first moment we met, upon that distant forest path, there is been sunlight in the autumn leaves, blazing like the colors of your hair. My lord, you should not speak so. But, my lady, I must, I must. My lord, no, I forbid you. This cannot be, this must not be. But why, my love, why? My lord, it is too dreadful. Do not force me to speak the words. My lady, I beg you, I must know. I would rather die than... There.
piece of crap! <laughs> oh, careful! It might kick back! Whack! I found Muerte's room. Muerte had received a letter. not a pretty sight. The hooker had left her diary on the table.
The old service elevator rumbled down to the bowels of Jack Lapino's hotel. Exhibit number one, a newspaper. Vampire movies. Why are they always set in L.A. or Mexico? They can't even run them down. with the guns. Trust me, you don't want to piss me where they are. Gentlemen, let's do business. Hey. Time ago, this would have gone down as a narcotics arrest. <sighs> there was a key on the table. room and I'm thinking now they're gonna do it mm -hmm. but no they sit down in front of a TV and solve their differences with the kung fu fighting video game I tell you candy I was so depressed I strangled them both with the video game cables oh Rico you're so bad I am ain't I mm -hmm. 
Rico Muerte, big time hustler. Who the hell? It's that cop. Muerte went for his gun. switchboard was still in use.
turn around, walk away, blow town. That would have been the smart thing to do. Guess I wasn't that smart. Lupino's tenement buildings were a seedy hangout for all kinds of sleaze. A liquor store, a pawn shop, a laundromat full of mobster bookies and loan sharks. The list went on. The how and why of it was a mystery to me, but they knew I was a cop. They knew I was coming, and they were gonna get real trigger-happy about it. I got to see Lupino's hangout all lit up. A bomb went off, turning snow into liquid gold. A pillar of fire lifted the remains of a car straight up into the air. The flames were highlighted on the hood of a black Mercedes Benz as it coasted down the street real slow, as if the driver didn't have a worry in the world. I got a good look at the man riding shotgun. It was Vladimir, the head of the local Russian mob, the fly in Don Punchinello's soup. The ringing in my ears was the sound of a mob war being waged. exploded inside the closest slum building. It was a lucky break. The goons inside were spooked, but luck always came with a price tag. More bombs could still be ticking inside, and the cops would already be on their way. Jack Lupino's suite was on the top floor. At least it used to be, before the explosive makeover. were a depressing read. building was rigged with explosives. Someone had left a letter up with a key on the shelf.
ones that destroyed all the stairs up to Lupino's office. The alternate route led there by way of adjoining rooftops. <laughs> 